All right, welcome back, everybody. Imagine this, you are in traffic. Someone decides to cut in front of you without warning. Now, your first instinct, instinct might be to angrily mutter a few choice words, <laughs> but according to our next guest, this might be the perfect time for a mindful practice. Indeed, to show us how to better navigate difficult feelings with mindfulness practices for every situation is host on 99.9 .9 Virgin Radio and meditation teacher, Sam East. Welcome to the show, Sam. Thank you for having me, ladies. Thank you. Um, so I think, Sam, a lot of people have an idea of what mindfulness is and maybe their own interpretation, but in your description, what is mindfulness? Well, at the core of it, mindfulness practices give you a chance to respond versus reacting to the stimuli that's coming at you at all times. And I think where the misconceptions come in with mindfulness practices, you rightfully so think of the traditional practices of meditation, those ancient traditions, which might involve being in a beautiful field or a quiet space for hours or days at a time. But we know in our modern world with our modern demands and schedules, that's just not possible. That's not accessible for us, but there are mindfulness practices that can fit into your daily life. With the stimulus that's coming at you from morning to night, you need to be equipped with the right tools to navigate that and help manage your stress response as well. I, so you say mindfulness practices shouldn't be optional. It should be incorporated as much as we do regular physical activity. I really do agree, but you talk about mm -hmm. why, why that is. And I heard you speaking about this on a previous episode about sex and relationships, yes. integrating that mindfulness, which I love. But by definition, mindfulness is a sustained state of presence with non-judgmental awareness. So by that definition, that really extends to all different types of modalities, exercises, and expressions. But it is crucial to your mental health and well-being to have those tools at the ready. And mindfulness practices, they vary. It's really a it's not a, a one size fits all. It's about finding the practice that's right for you and your current situation. Got it. Okay, speaking of situations, you say, Sam, that this, uh, there is, you know, in your opinion, an accessible um, mindfulness practice for virtually any situation mm -hmm. out there. So we're going to give you some. Okay. 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 And audience, we're going to invite you to do this along with us. So you're going to suggest a mindfulness practice that would help us navigate for that specific situation or that moment, okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's begin with this one. If someone is feeling overwhelmed with their to-do list. Ooh. Okay, we've all been there. Yes. What is a mindfulness practice that you suggest? So there's a newer, uh, there's newer data on this breathing technique called the physiological sigh. One of the telltale signs when you're stressed out is obviously your heart rate starts to elevate on that. Mm -hmm. So a way to lower your heart rate is by intentionally making your exhales longer and more intense than your inhales for a concentrated amount of time. And that's where the physiological so, sigh comes in. Kind of like a Okay, I can, I can yeah. do it. Can so, we do it? Okay. Yeah. So right now, uh, if you can guide us yes. through it, audience, let's do this So together. we'll explain it, yeah. Inhale through the nose with a short little top up and exhale ah, ah. through the mouth. Do you have to make noise when you it, exhale? It, it helps. Okay. It does help to have that okay. audible sigh if possible because in the heat of that stressed out moment and you don't have time for a full on 10 minute meditation, you need that quick hit to help lower your heart rate. It's okay. funny. It's funny because Jason does this all the time oh. and I hate it. Oh like, my God. <laughs> I know it's the right thing to do. Yeah. I know it's calming him down, but as, as something for me to make note of. Anyway, we'll unpack that later. So, okay, another scenario. If someone is struggling with his or her self-confidence and insecurity mm. issues, what mindfulness practice would you suggest? Well, we've all heard of the gratitude journaling, right? Mm -hmm. Writing down the three things that you're grateful for, perhaps when you start your day or at the end of your day before you go to sleep. But there is research and science behind this. With gratitude practice, when you make it consistent, it regularly releases, triggers those feel-good neurochemicals like the serotonin and the dopamine. But again, that's through consistent practices. Consistent gratitude journaling. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Here's the next uh, scenario. If someone is having trouble focusing, for instance, they have a project to finish or a big presentation coming up, they cannot seem to focus, mm. or if your child is having difficulties focusing at school, for example, what's the mindful practice for us? This one's a really easy one, again, to wrap your head around. It's the 54321 grounding technique. And in this, you are looking to engage your five senses which helps bring you out of those racing thoughts that you're having when you're stressed in the heat of that moment, get you out of fight or flight, and focus on the task at hand. So the five senses being seeing, five things that you can see in front of you. And you don't have to think too hard about it. Mel shoes, beautiful, the carpet, mm -hmm. uh, anything in front of you that you can label. Four things that you can touch from your clothing on your skin, maybe your nail polish on your nails if you're wearing that 
Three things that you can hear, like a conversation in the distance or traffic in the distance. Two things that you can, uh, that you smell. can smell. smell, thank you. Mm -hmm. That you can smell, like perhaps your own perfume or cologne. And finally, one thing that you can taste, like the last thing that you ate. Which Neat. was really good. <laughs> yes, um, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, I know we've all had to deal with at least one person like this in our lives. What would you recommend when we're dealing with a difficult person? This is probably my favorite uh, meditation as a teacher. It's called the loving kindness meditation that you might be familiar with or traditionally called metta. And in this, you are intentionally cultivating kindness and compassion for yourself, for someone in your life that you care about, and then that challenging person, as in the person who cut you off or the person you're in <laughs> conflict with or someone who said something unkind to you on social media. And so it's intentional breathing paired with a phrase in your mind such as, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you live your life with ease. If you're able to cultivate that for yourself and someone you love, hopefully you can carry that on to the person that you're struggling with a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, P.S. That last one, I call that giving someone a silent blessing. But anyway, oh moving God. on. Uh, anxious. A mm. lot of people dealing with anxieties in different ways and spaces in their life. What's the practice? No, it sounds silly, but it's a dance break. Dance is a presence-based activity. So naturally, it draws you to the current moment and pulls you away from dwelling on the past or fixating on the future. Plus, there is growing research that suggests that it is the best, most effective cardio-based uh, exercise that helps with chronic pain boosting your mood and dealing with anxiety. Plus, there's no rules. You could be a terrible dancer. You could have no rhythm, no coordination, and it's an amazing way to express yourself in ways that you may have repressed previously. Okay, well, like, should we do it? Yeah. Like, totally. should we do it? Yes, okay. please. Let's do okay, it. Okay, we're good. No rules. Can we hit okay. the music? So I'm going to throw it a break, and we're going to do our mindful practice yes. for anxiety, everybody. Sam, thank you for thank being you. here with thank us. Thank you, ladies. And we'll dance body, it out. Uh, we'll body, be back body, right body, after body. this. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.